35% of women in the U.S. have experienced rape, physical violence, and or stalking by their partner. Almost 50% of homeless women and their children are homeless because of domestic violence. These are all national statistics from the local YWCA. Here in Springfield, I found out as of July, half of all homicides were directly related to domestic violence. Why is this happening and what can be done to stop it? Joining me is Mary Reardon Johnson, Executive Director of the YWCA. Thank you so much for joining Thank me, you. Mary. Thanks. Now, let's talk about why this area is suffering so badly from domestic violence. What's going on? I think, sadly, our area is suffering from violence. And um, a culture of violence breeds violence. Uh, children seeing violence in the home, families uh, believing that you resolve differences by um, force or violence, people believing they possess or can control another human being. Um, all of that is a learned behavior and it, um, it, it's, it's become part of our culture. So as violence es escalates, so does domestic violence escalate. What makes that person, you mentioned a person wanting to control another person, where does that come from, that need or that desire to control through a physical act another person? Um, I don't know what causes that other than they believe they can. You know, it's um, uh, one of the amazing things to me is looking at some of our sports, uh, looking at football, for instance. And we had a, a well-known quarterback who was abusive towards animals, and he served some prison time, and rightfully so. Had he done the same to his wife, had he beaten a woman, um, that wouldn't have happened, and that hasn't happened. That it's, it's part of the culture that um, it seems to be okay to, uh, to beat women, to try and control them. They're your property. Um, you're either um, big enough or wealthy enough or you're in control, and you also want to control the people that you say that you love. You want to own them as well. How much control do outside forces have on a person's behavior or actions? Mm. I, I think we always want to find outside forces versus uh, putting the responsibility where it needs to be, and that is with the person. Oftentimes we're asked, is it because of the economy? Is it, why, why is this? What is the force? Um, that takes away from the individual responsibility for their behavior. For one human being to hurt another human being is wrong. It's as simple as that. I know you mentioned earlier talking about sometimes there aren't the consequence consequences in the court system to follow up on domestic violence. We asked on Facebook what are different thoughts on domestic violence or what can be done to prevent it and somebody had stated that they felt stronger penalties needed to be reinforced to teach there are real consequences. Do you feel the court system does a good enough job of that? I think the court system has come a long way, and I'm not tucking the question at all. Um, you know, uh, in the past 20 years, there's been more legislation regarding domestic violence than there has any other crime. We're still catching up with it when we look at the whole issue of cyberbullying and, and uh, sex text sexting. Um, but I'm old enough to remember when um, women were seen as part of the man's property. As a young social worker, that really the, the house and the children were basically considered hers, and, and she shouldn't leave unless she was giving up some rights to that. Everything has appropriately changed. Um, the other thing that we realized was that uh, it's hard for a woman to testify against someone, A, she loves, but more importantly, has terrorized her has told her that he's not only going to kill her, but maybe their children, maybe her family, everything that she loves. And she has, has good reason to believe him, given his behavior in the, in the past. So most women are fearful and don't want to testify. And this is very frustrating for the court systems that want to put him away. Um, so they have to rely on evidence. So oftentimes, everybody's at cross purposes. Our role is we know she's traumatized. 
Um, it is a big thing to have the person that you love uh, abuse you. And, and we want to accept that. That's not necessarily what the, that's not what the court system is there for. They're there for a conviction. So how can you guys show that they can proceed and press charges? I mean, you can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force him to drink. How can you evidence. show? Evidence. When, when you come upon a scene and um, you see that a woman's been beaten, um, why do you need her to tell that she's been beaten. There's evidence there. It's it's a um, and, and and they can get evidence. I mean, children don't testify yet. We know children are, are abused and assaulted. Um, you know, he's relying on the fact that she's not going to testify. He's counting on that, and that's how a lot get uh, uh, lesser or are no crimes. Certainly, that's particularly true in sexual assault is that women are not very likely to come forward and certainly not likely to prosecute. What makes them take that step where they say, no, I do want to prosecute, I do want to press charges, I want to end this? Where is that? I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I think that um, some of us just uh, need to get through the trauma and appropriately need to take care of ourselves. Um, some of us are, st are stronger or just have um, different needs than others. Some really want that closure and need that closure for prosecution. Some just need to get one foot in front of the other. You know, whenever there is a major incident, we get a lot of calls on our hotline because it triggers uh, their own sexual or physical assault. What are some options available for victims if they feel they've been wronged or something has happened and they want to take that next step? What is available to them? The, the first thing to remember is that um, we all want to understand this and, and find out where we can blame it or what we can change. The thing that we can't do is blame her, is blame the victim. Um, it's not her fault. And really what she wants is just to be safe. It, it took me a long time to, to figure out why don't they leave? <laughs> they don't leave because there's stigmas attached to it. They don't leave because they're embarrassed. They don't leave because they're frightened. They don't leave because they love them and just want it to stop. So what we're about is, is hearing their story, validating that, and really going over a safety plan with them. Um, what can you do to be safe? And that's, that's very, very uh, personalized. You know, for some people, they have to go live with family or friends. Some people don't have that. Some people feel they need to leave the area. Some people feel that they don't have a choice and that if their children um, are going to have an education, are going to have a nice home to live in, they just have to stay in the relationship, that they themselves can't offer that. Uh, so they will stay in abusive relationships. I was reading on your website how minority women tend to be at a disproportionate disadvantage to this. Why is that? Is it something in the culture and how they've been brought up? Why are they at such a disadvantage when it comes to incidents like domestic violence? What we know is that no culture is immune uh, to the issue of violence, uh, be it physical or sexual. What we also know is that women who have resources have more options. Um, so oftentimes, uh, most often, we see poor women. We see poor women because they don't have other resources, but also because they don't have as much to lose, if you will. And, 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 and by that I mean what I said prior, and that is that um, for some women, they can't afford the mortgage on their own. They can't afford a tuition payment. They can if they stay in that relationship. A, a poor woman um, has a, a different set of issues and concerns. Um, so yes, it's, it's different. Often it is a socioeconomic issue as well as um, just an issue of, of, of anything else. The important thing to know is that it crosses all lines. Uh, but some of us have more options. What is the goal of the YWCA? What do you guys want to see accomplished when it comes to domestic violence? Mm. 
Well, our mission is the empowerment of women and the elimination of racism. So for us, um, we know it's not an issue of race. Um, we also know that people are often judged by race or, or things are assigned um, because of their, their color. Um, but we also believe women are very, very strong. We also believe if given the resources, women can and, and will take care of themselves and their children. So for us, um, our mission is providing a safe place for women and girls and believing in them and believing if given the skills, if given the opportunity, if given the very basic thing of having a safe place to sleep, women will be fine. Okay, great. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you.